All right, good morning, everyone. I am at the University of California, Riverside for the North America Paleontological Conference, or NAPC. And so I feel like when we learn about science in schools, uh, conferences are kind of the one thing that we leave out. When we talk about the scientific method, we do talk about communication, uh, but we really don't talk too much about how that actually occurs, maybe uh, outside of uh, publications. Uh, but this is another way in which scientists communicate with one another is by going to these large conferences. So here at NAPC, uh, we actually have a couple of high school students attending, which is awesome. Uh, we also have a few amateurs, uh, but then we have you know, professors and museum curators and even the museum curator of the Smithsonian. So a uh, rather big group, uh, even though it is the North America Paleontological Convention, uh, we have a lot of people internationally as well, which is fantastic. Um, and also the talks aren't just on North American fossils, there are fossils from all over the place, but it's a really good time to learn what other people are doing, to network with other people, get into contact, uh, so you can do collaborations with people, and also just catch up with um, friends and uh, people that you know in the field as well. So this is actually day three of the conference, and I've talked a lot about people giving talks and lectures, which I think is you know what a lot of people think of, at least in paleontology, well, at least in any academic field when you talk about conferences. You're giving a presentation, a PowerPoint, usually about 15 minutes uh, in front of your peers. But there are also things like um, posters. Uh, posters can convey a lot of information uh, graphically, uh, and then also people who are presenting posters uh, can also help explain and answer questions uh, during the poster sessions. A lot of times at conferences like uh, this one or Geological Society of America, you'll uh, have things like field trips uh, that are a possibility so you can learn a little bit about uh, geology and paleontology of the area. Um, and there's also workshops. So yesterday I attended one on the paleo, on the paleo uh, biology database, the PBDB. Uh, which is a, a free resource, uh, which we can include down in the link below. Anyways, it contains a lot of data on uh, published fossils and uh, where they would have been uh, geographically. And so you can see where all of these things were living together spatially. So we're just going to continue on down to the main event. Uh, I'm staying right here on campus. A lot of the other presenters are staying here on campus as well, um, which so far the combinations have been great here. And yeah, we're just going to see how this day goes. There's been a lot of good talks on botany, which of course is what I do. Uh, there have been talks on uh, finds found on public lands, and of course, you know, yesterday I was in the the paleobiology database session and so today uh, it's going to be on interactions between amateurs and professionals in paleontology and that's what I'm going to be speaking on and this is uh, one of a lot of people from fossil project are going to be speaking as well so you'll probably see their faces appear throughout uh, this video as well so let's continue on our way down to the talks
right, so we're now back in Florida and I didn't have a chance to kind of go over like a little bit of a recap of everything that happened and sort of my final thoughts on NAPC. Uh, so I'll do that right now. Uh, the one thing I forgot to mention first was that when you check in you get a, a swag bag. So let's see if I can hold that up right here for the camera. Uh, it's a nice little, nice little tote with the uh, NAPC logo on it. Uh, with all the, the pictures there and then of course you know name tag um, that lets you get into the talks and also the uh, meals and coffee and then uh, you also get a water bottle sadly the uh, logo rubbed off uh, a little bit but it's still you know pretty cool looking water bottle uh, in terms of the conference itself uh, I think it was great. This was easily my favorite academic conference that I've been to. And I think there's a couple of reasons for that. So um, the first couple conferences I've been to, uh, they were you know, botany or geology conferences. And um, one of the reasons you know, I didn't particularly care for those is because I didn't... One reason was probably because I didn't know a lot of people there. And, and two, because I don't really consider myself solely a geologist or solely like a botanist. Uh, I really do consider myself more of a paleontologist than someone who does. Uh, even though I work with plants right now, I, I consider myself someone who's like interested in just anything, <laughs> anything fossil. Um, so that I think for me, this, the, the overall theme, even though there's multiple you know, themes within the within the conference. I think the overall arching of paleontology is a lot more interesting for me as an individual. And I think a lot of people also, like this, this is a conference that only happens about once every four to five years. And so it's not as frequent as these other botanical or geological conferences. And so I think that kind of makes it a little more special in a way, but in a way that I'd also like to have it more frequent in order to you know keep that sort of engagement what else do i have to say um it sort of feels like a, a sporting event in a way it reminds me of being in a swim meet you know instead of you know waiting for your race you're waiting for your talk um and it, it would kind of be interesting to to uh kind of do a parody of you know it's sort of like you know the hype for the olympics but you know hype for <laughs> uh these sorts of conference talks it's um you know, look out in the future we might have something uh, for that. What else do I have to say? Uh, I had a list of things I was going to say. Uh, my only really big complaint about the conference was the the logistics for like, the coffee, lemonade, cookies. Uh, I, I feel like those could have been planned, put in different places so it's not everyone rushing at same place at the same time and it got really crowded but that's really my only big complaint about that. Bye!